oh, there's a monster that's going to appear, but you, you, you hold back the monster and you, you exist in this slightly more uh, subtle realm where the threat of something that doesn't happen, but you continue to kind of make sure the threat feels like it, it's there and it's about to impose itself on, on, on the characters and the narrative, maintaining that sense of, of foreboding and threat is exactly the same really for the, for the filmmaker. As for, as, as for the novelist, but I, th I think this is where the novel can work better if you like the more patient narrative. Probably about halfway to two thirds of the way through a feature film, generally, that the producer will tell you to ramp up the tension. Whereas I think in fiction, writers and, 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 their, and their collaborators can see that being more patient works. Does that make it quite hard then to get a film like the others through? Yes, yes. And in fact, often I think. I've been this myself, we, we, we wanted to write a um, sort of chilling, patient horror film all about a writing group stuck in, in an old house in the country. <laughs> um, and uh, we wanted to just do the strangest, quietest horror film, you know, and keep it quiet for as long as possible, but gradually everyone who had money invested wanted us to push the pace in, in the last third more than we were happy to, and in the end, you know, we didn't really arrive at a very happy compromise. So that patience is actually very valuable, not just to fiction, but I think to to horror filmmakers. What's great about film though is that you can have stuff like going on in the background. I always quite like that in a horror film where you're concentrating on like your protagonist going through the house and you mm. see something like walk behind mm. them or or something like that, which you can't yeah. get in fiction. So, is, is, is there equivalent, an equivalent in writing of a cheap scare? So, you know that, oh, well, right. you know what I mean by the cheap yeah, scare, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know the sudden like, face at the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, what do you think is the equivalent in um, in, in writing, or yeah, is there I'm not? Probably, I've probably been guilty of that a few times. <laughs> 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 I think it's going to be something, and then it's not. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, it's like a sudden, sudden noise dog. that turns yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably a noise that turns out to be something it's not. Or, mm. I kind of, I've been more truly terrified a few times by a film than novels, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I think it is just, you know, it's the combination of the lighting and the music. Music. Everything that's used, but something like Rosemary's Baby, and I think it's a great novel. Mm. But the film is the, what I come back to. It's oh, truly, it's truly terrifying. Yeah. yeah. You haven't seen the film? No. Oh, you're just great. Right. Right. I thought I don't need yeah. a film. My mum watched it when she was pregnant with me. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, she said, I'm sure that's why you like. I don't know how you can watch horror films all the time, but. She, she uh, saw that and um, say a lot. <laughs> so you absorbed it. <laughs> I think it's the best time to see these things. Any more questions? Uh, lady? Yeah. Um, you spent uh, quite a lot of time at the beginning trying to define the Gothic uh, and the whole genre, actually. And it made me think a lot whether this is actually a genre that doesn't want to be defined and is always. Um, you know, pushing the boundaries. Absolutely. Uh, because even all these play texts that you have mentioned, Dracula, Frankenstein, and Dracula, mm -hmm. everyone, uh, all these authors, yes, there are some common <coughs> things, but they are very, very different from each other. Mm -hmm. And it depends how you're going to look at it, because some of these texts, for some people, might be gothic, for others, might be science fiction, or Frankenstein, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. with elements of gothic. Mm -hmm. But also Gothic as an idea is not something that is like the last 400 years, 200 years, is it? I mean, you can see that in classical writers as well. Uh, a lot of elements, which is part of our lives. Absolutely, and I think, even going back to like the revenge tragedies of the 1600s, mm -hmm. you can see so much Gothic in that. And, mm -hmm. and like you say, there's, yeah, there's Gothic romance, there's Gothic horror, there's American, American Gothic, yeah, Southern, Southern Gothic. Gothic. There's, yeah, there's so many different mm -hmm. uh, elements to it. And, and you're right, it's, it's something that shifts and... But you, like know, you know what itself. it is when, it, when you're reading it, though, don't you? I mean, um, or when you're writing it, or do you? Mm -hmm. I think that lingering feeling, that atmosphere, yeah. does sort of yeah. take hold. Yeah. You're right, it's very much atmosphere. It is, I think mm -hmm. it comes down to everything, it's atmosphere. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think then that it's a genre that a lot of people uh, experiment with? Mm. Maybe unknowingly sometimes as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm. I don't think one writes these things consciously necessarily. <laughs> <Yeah. now. laughs> Because we are, like you say, we're deconstructing now, but if you are over-analytical while you're writing, it just doesn't work. Yeah. You have to understand it more later, I think. Mm -hmm.
what you've actually produced, because a lot of it is coming out of the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. I mean, you said that already when you were planning. Yeah. Like the whole thing, but somehow it slipped. The planning, like, really yeah. didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. So something that you try to control is uncontrollable. But yeah. I think that Gothic in itself is is that kind of thing as well, isn't it? It's, it's focused exactly on that that battle inside of us. Yeah. 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 But would you agree with that? I mean, you should be earlier, you're planning when you're writing. Oh, yes, but then... Plan things. Yeah, I think the script's a little bit more mechanical. It's a bit more like drawing the architect's drawings yeah. for someone else to build it, rather than creating the building itself and the work of beauty. Um, though not the scripts can't be beautiful in themselves, but they're not necessarily the... And you need, like, a path through the Gothic no. because mm. it's so but shifting. You know, if you don't have at least a little plan, I think you can get very lost yeah. and get yeah. swapped in it. I've learned, to, my father uses this phrase, finger tight, you know, DIY, you know, you tighten the screen like this. I think the plan should be, think, for me, the plan should be finger tight. Yeah. Probably it sounds like you guys keep it even looser, but, because um, mm. it, it will, like I say, it will, it will, it will grow a bit and it will move a bit, yeah. so, and it has to, yeah. There's a lady towards the back. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, basically, you were talking earlier about the modern um, elements, and if you can bring it into the modern day, and obviously, if you I knew Michael Hurley did that quite well with Loney. Um, but then he's still in a very, you know, out of well, out of modern world setting. So do you think they could do it in like modern day settings, you know, sort of like a lot of horrors are set on trains and planes and transport and in, you know, big cities, do you think that, that could actually work I think it definitely can. I think it's a lot harder to do. Um, but some people do it brilliantly. Um, who, who would you say has done that brilliantly? Well, I'm still thinking of Rosemary's Baby, to be honest with you, because I just think the kind of social paranoia and that kind of urban, um, urban paranoia, and, and, and the Stepford Wives, again, same yeah. author, is, is a similar thing. I, I think I would struggle to do it. I'd love to have yeah. a go, but I think it would be challenging. I would find it a lot harder. But yeah, I think it, it can work extremely effectively, yeah. um, but it's difficult to do. Shining's got. Oh, the shining. Got yeah. aspects of, of what we're talking about. So yeah, it's your hotels bit, doesn't it? It's on the corridors. But again, that's very isolated yeah, hotel, isn't it? And yeah. the snow, yeah. and it's very, um, it's very cut off. So. Uh, yeah, I think it's harder to yes, it's harder to isolate your, mm. your characters in in, in, in the urban setting. I have this phrase about the genre. I, I use with writers that I'm trying to develop in the industry, and, and I, I tell them that your character in the middle of nowhere, mm. and as a face being obliterated by a monster, they have to face their own damage. And of course, in the middle of nowhere can mean anything, the monster can be anything, the damage can be anything, but those three things have to be there in a kind of mm. interconnected triangle. I, th I thought Hilary Mantel did it quite really well in Beyond Black. I thought the end sort of got lost a bit, but Beyond Black, I mean, it's, it, she's a psychic who does the M25 circuit, because it was the M40, it's a while since I've read it. And that's gloriously creepy and horrible. And I, I read that on holiday. Somebody had lent us a flat, their grandmother's flat, and it had pictures in, in Spain. It had pictures of Jesus and crucifixes everywhere, which probably made it more creepy. <laughs> but she stuck it in suburbia, in, in yeah. London suburbs. Um, so I, th I think it is possible. I just realized I read one last week, yeah. script this was. I read one last week, which was about a haunted LA motel. Yeah. And, and, and again, elements of lingering atmosphere and slow moving plot and so forth. So, yeah. And the people. internal can be done, you know, in any atmosphere, can't it? Yeah. The internal yeah. psychological mm. breakdown that's. Mm. Any other questions? Anybody else? Sure. It's, it's been fascinating. We've not got much time, but I wanted to just finish off by asking each of you if there's a book you'd recommend that people may not have... We've mentioned a lot of different novels. Um, I was thinking of Robert Ack Ackman, who is a brilliant ghostwriter who lots of people haven't heard of, um, who uh, was the head of the Canals Board or something, and a friend of Elizabeth <laughs> James Howard, that wrote wonderful MRA of MR James-type um, ghost stories. Uh, very, very creepy. Um, but what about you guys? Is there anybody that you would recommend that people here might want to dip into? That's purely gothic or just ghost or any other? Yeah. yeah. 
that goes into this genre that could fit into this very broad genre? So, Roald Dahl um, collected an ama he did an amazing collection of short ghost stories, mm -hmm. and he said he wrote he wrote thousands and thousands to come up with a few he selected. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only one by him in it, and that's absolutely brilliant. I think uh, it's just called the Roald Dahl Collected Ghost Stories or something. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I mean, you make you probably have heard of Michelle Paver, um, <coughs> but she's worth mentioning because I mentioned her her ghost stories are really scary. Yeah. The one that's set in, is it the Arctic? Yeah, yeah. There's, um, they're both kind of wintry ones. Mm. The dark matter and the dark thin matter, air. And they're, both, um, they're both... That's a real yeah. chiller, isn't it? Yeah, they're both <laughs> very you know, exotic, different landscapes and, and really scary. Mm. He, there's an Argentine writer called Julio Cortazar, who's more talked about as a magical realist, but strangely we've talked about this patience of building the sort of unnerving effect and often being so patient that you might not even give the answer by the end, like Edgar Allan Poe. And I think Julio Cortazar is one of those few writers who obsessively tries not to give you closure at the end in that way that Edgar Allan Poe works. Um, in that sense, there, that, that atmosphere, it, it creates this atmosphere to such an extent. So I, I throw him into the mix, just to be a bit different. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. You've been an absolutely brilliant panel, I'm sure. Oh, is it a sort of question? Yes, please. Please do. We've got a little bit more time. My question is, um, when you're writing a book or thinking of an idea of a book, do you say that you'd have to have a part of you that's haunted by something in your own past that actually have the uh, always idea to write something? That's really or, interesting. Yeah, that's a great question. So do you, I don't know if everybody heard that, it's that when they're writing, um, do they have to have something in their own past that they feel haunted by that a, helps them right and get that sense of psychological drama and terror. So I think that's a fair representation. I, I can't say I ever yeah. think of my past when I'm writing, I'm thinking of the character. Um, but I think you can use your own fears. Um, like I said, I found the silent companions creepy. Um, if it does happen, it must be a very un unconscious thing. Because I, I guess everybody is haunted by something, but mm -hmm. doesn't really know what it is you asked me what I was wanted by. Mm. What's interesting is by the time you've written several novels you, you do start realising that your own psychology is coming out <laughs> in a way that you just you hadn't realised and you start thinking oh right okay that's just saved me a thousand years of shrinking. <laughs> I now realise that some of the things I write about are this mm. and yet it, it's taken very different forms but I these are my preoccupations and yeah, you just you don't realise it for some time, <laughs> but they are they are a driving force in, in terms of writing sometimes. I want to say no, and then you don't not believe me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you do really, but uh, whether you want to be conscious of that, whether it's useful for you to be conscious of that or more instinctive yeah. about that, is different for every writer. And yeah, but I think it's pretty useful. <laughs> we're generally quite happy, not haunted people, aren't we? <laughs> well, I, I always remember Ian Rankin telling me um, in an interview that that he thought crime writers and horror writers were most psychologically well balanced people because yeah. they got all of out. their out. monsters out on the page. He said you just want to meet those romance novels. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is why you're all so well balanced. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank it's you. been a fascinating evening. It's been really interesting to to hear about your own methods of working, your thoughts on, on what has proved to be a very difficult genre to pin down. So, Laura, your book, and you'll be here. You'll be able to sign some yep. books at yep. the end. I'm here to sign. And Joanna and Jeremy, I'd just like to say thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. very much panel that was amazing um, thank you very much for being here and um, there'll be books on sale if anyone would like to buy one before they leave um, otherwise thank you for being here and we hope to see you again